Hey, what's up? I'm Guy. I'm John. This is our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. Give this video a like. Check out our podcast also below in the description. I'm talking fast because we have breaking news, John. What is I'm ready it? to go. Tell, talk. Uh, Muhammad Sanu, 49ers, have come to an agreement. He's now a 49er. The same guy that got traded last year, if you remember, for a second-round pick to Bill Belichick, I, I, who then Bill Belichick cut this year. I had to go back and look, and it's like, was that last year? That was last year because somebody tweeted at us on Monday, I think, maybe it was Sunday, some comment about us, oh, Sanu and Debo together, and acted like they were the new, you know, Alvin Harper, Michael Irvin, John Taylor, Jerry Rice. I was like, let's pump the brakes a little. But then I did what everyone else would naturally do. I went straight to the football reference to check out Muhammad Sanu's numbers. Last year between two teams, 60 catches, John, couple of touchdowns. Uh, the year before, four touchdowns. Kyle was asked about him. He's like, yeah, I like Muhammad. If we need him, he would fit. Uh, and obviously they need him, so he fits. I mean, he's a good player. Uh, well, there were two guys traded he, last year at the deadline. There, there were two guys traded last year at the deadline, guy. And the Niners were, you know, rumored to get one of the two of them. And they ended up getting the other one. And part of it was like, you know, they couldn't trade a second-round pick for Muhammad Sanu. So they traded a third and a fourth for Emmanuel Sanders. Then, this is why I'm always a big believer, Belichick's king of this. Even though he didn't do it with Muhammad Sanu, he got really aggressive. I also think Belichick probably knew this is the last year with Tom Brady. I might as well just take a swing, right? I don't think it's really that crazy looking back. Belichick clearly didn't care. It's not like he gets pressured for Robert Kraft. He cut the guy. and He'll just trade his own first for a second anyway, so... But here's my take on this one. I don't think they were, like, running to sign this guy. Mm -hmm. I, I think that I, – I just go back to that Dante Pettis play. I, you just couldn't keep rolling him out. And you, you couldn't keep making him a major part of your offense. And like you said earlier in the podcast, that there was no way to avoid not playing him given their injury. So it's like they don't want to play him at all. He, he Kyle Shannon has showed us, right, he wants to put – Dante Pettis on the sideline. But right now, he looks, he's got Debo in sweats. He's got Ayuk, just major question mark, rookie, bad hammy. I, I, I don't have a choice. I got Jalen Hurd on injured reserve, not the three-weeker, the year, that I had to do this, I had to make this move. I I, I don't want to say this desperation, but I think this they were forced into, they, don't, they didn't have a choice. Yeah, right? I, I agree, but I would also add, they're getting pretty lucky here that it just so happens that out there among the players available, and there's not a ton that you would say belong on an NFL roster, here's a guy who – it'd be one thing if the Patriots had acquired him last year. He had 59 catches over the course of the time with Atlanta and New England, and he was 37 years old. But he's not. He's 31, right? Like, I think when you tell me Mohamed Sanu was out there, without really thinking much about it, when this conversation started up a couple of days ago, in my head, Mohamed Sanu was 34 and had 17 catches last year. That's not the case. The reason they're lucky is this is not an easy offense to learn. This is a hard offense to just grab somebody, throw them in week two, and say, we really need you. Yeah. So they're lucky that Mohamed Sanu is available and that Mohamed Sanu is 31, not 34, and that Mohamed Sanu, I mean, he he, he played 15 games last year. He's, he's He actually plays almost every game, almost every year of his career. Like they, the Niners are really lucky right here. They've gotten well. There breaks. is a, there is a reason though, guy. He once he got traded to New England, he was terrible. I understand. And if you have a guy of his, he's a vested veteran. I think a lot of teams once he gets cut, you wouldn't want him week one because then his contract is guaranteed. That was a big thing. Like, oh, why don't the why don't the Titans cut Goodkowski? Well, they just guaranteed his contract the moment you're on this he roster. He can only get week better, one. John. So, but my point is that the, but it's understandable why he was out there. Yes. Now, you're right. There is an element of luck that Kyle's used him. He knows the offense for sure. So it's I, it's it was understandable why he's out there. Also, lucky that the Niners have this connection. Exactly. It just you know my, just, my, the stars aligned. My point is the guys and who Pettis, are available. And Pettis created this situation. <laughs> well, Pettis and Debo and Richie Jane. Yeah. But yeah, but I think if Pettis had nine catches and they won, I don't know if they would have been forced into this. I no, I'm just saying, like if if they could if Pettis depend had nine catches, Pettis, they they can't depend on Pettis, guy. Well, I know, but I'm just saying, there's a difference between nine catches and let's depend on him would have been like four catches. Yeah, every no, four week. or five. Yeah, just a guy that could just play you in made the him NFL. A pro Bowler. Yeah, guy. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Amari Cooper, Dante Pettis. Yeah, you're right. I, I, I five think, a guy that you could just play a game with. I think you said it right though. There's. I don't want to overstate this because I think one thing that's going to happen is people are going to overstate how good Mohamed Sanu can be. 
there's when it's week one, if you're available, there are flaws. I'm just saying they're lucky that one of the guys who was out there was a guy who Kyle trusts and who knows Kyle's offense. I, I agree. But I also think we need to just the, the way the hype goes. Totally. We'll be like, oh, the next two weeks, Jets, Giants, you know, should I start on my fantasy team? <laughs> like, Well, right. I, if, if you get three catches out of this guy this weekend, that'd be a win, right? Because it'd be a guy that wasn't going to play. Jim, say what you want. He knows the offense. The quarterback who, as we've talked about, well-documented, worst game probably of his Niner career, one of them, uh, definitely the worst game, as you said, since the game's mattered. You can't just expect. It's probably going to be a little more challenging than I think people are just going to say. Knows Kyle. Knows the offense. Belichick liked him. You know, He was unemployed. Quarterback struggling. Offense, the passing game in shambles. Kittle not going to be 100%. So, like, you don't quite need to just double team him on every play. It's, it's, it's going to be just probably a little less seamless than I think, like, social media and just even the casual fan, in fairness, will be like, oh, Sanu, it'll be, this will help. Like, it, it might, but it there is a chance it might not, right? Well, John, so all, you want to go through his game log from last year? We started strong, I would imagine, in yeah, Atlanta. Yeah, he had five catches for 50, four catches for 16, six for 75, nine for 90, five for 42, three for 29, one for three. Then he gets traded. Debuts in New England, two for 23. His second Patriots game is at Baltimore. They lose 37 to 20, but they target him 14 times. He catches 10 balls for 81 yards and a touchdown. Now I just take that. Yeah. Well, then it's two catches, four yards, three catches, 14, one, 13, two, 13, three for 24. To me, what they would take is week 16, three for 35. Yeah. But it, was, did he get hurt? I mean, it, yeah, I just think I mean, he was bad. I think he got dinged up a little bit, if I remember correctly, but it was – I just don't think it was seamless. Now, I think the pushback would be, well, the Patriot offense was in shambles. The Brady have a foot out the door. That they're, they're, You know, Nikhil they, – the whole passing game was shitty last year. So he yeah. went to a team – when he was on – when he was on Atlanta, a team with a good passing game, like you were reading out the stats, he was productive. So I think the Niners would well, go, we're not Atlanta, but we're definitely not New England last year. We're somewhere in the middle. He should be able to produce here. Well, his and production, we got him, and we got him on a deal that we don't have to guarantee his salary. That's to me is the key. Maybe he's because valued, if these guys come back, you get rid of him. Well, but I would say that's his value comes in when he is with Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk, and yeah. But what what if you get you, him and you realize he's no, not good? You you want the flexibility. One hundred percent. I'm just saying his career tells you he's at his best when he's playing with Julio, not when he's the number one option or the number two option. But you agree that it's probably. This was a cal- like they could have signed him last week. They clearly held off because they just wanted the flexibility that if it doesn't work, they don't have to keep him. Yeah, yeah. right. Because or these rumors pain. have been popping around. For well, a while. Kyle was getting asked last week, right? Yeah. And he spoke highly of him. I think he's a high character guy. It, it, it's fair to say that like if the Patriots like a guy, that the the Kyle's gonna like the guy. They they have similar views in type in players, right? Yeah, but character. This, but we don't even need to say, We know Kyle liked this guy. Kyle knows this yeah. guy, right? Well, yeah. But I'm just saying, like, Bill, so did Bill. Like, that's, that's, I, I, they just like the same players. Same type, you know, same type guys. Yeah. I was going to make Ky- a Kyle comment, knew him so. first, but I, I just, Kyle I would temper the, <laughs> I, I would just temper the enthusiasm I, I, a little bit on this situation. I, yes. I think that is, I, to me, what would you, what would be a good week Jets line for him? I mean, three for 35. I, would you, I, to me, there's like, I, I don't even. You don't even need to give me the yards. If he has four catches, that's a good week. Four catches. One of them will be 16 yards at the outside numbers, first down, and we'll four go. Four catches in a in a touchdown. Well, let's not get carried away here. 